Okay. Homework assignment. Okay, on um, page two it says uh, you have a LAN connected to R1, has 15 hosts, and then as a LAN connected to R2, has 30 hosts. What I would do in this instance, especially, well, first I have to note that it says do not use variable length subnet. So you can't use the variable length subnet mask calculator. You want to use the uh, traditional subnet calculator. <laughs> okay, and here's your base network. So you plug in your base network uh, 192, 168, 10. Okay. Um, now, the assignment specifies. 30 hosts maximum on the network. You could satisfy this requirement by, let's see, one, two, three, like creating four subnets, right? If you create four subnets, let's, let's do it. You create four subnets. You're going to have an extra subnet because you really need three. One, one, two, three. But how many hosts will you have on each network? How many host bits are available? Six, six host bits. So two to the sixth power minus two. Sixty-two. Sixty-two host addresses available, right? But your largest LAN requires 30 hosts. So if you were to use this subnetting scheme and address those devices accordingly, Packet Tracer will probably give you like a 21% or something like that. That's because Packet Tracer and Cisco is expecting you not to waste IP addresses. So what will be a better scheme? Not variable LAN. We need to choose enough uh, network bits that we limit the host range to somewhere closer to 30. So uh, let's let's uh, go with eight subnets. Okay. We have eight subnets, but how many hosts can we have on each one of these uh, subnets? How many host bits are available? How many host bits are available? How many host bits are available? What's that? How many host bits are available? Let's look at the subnet mass. The subnet mass tells us how many network bits are used. 8, 8, 8, 16 plus 3 more. Why 8, 8, 8, that's 24 plus 3, 27. So 32 from 27, well, 27 from 32 leaves us 5, so 2 to the 5th power minus 2 gives us 30, right? That's 30 host address. Right? <laughs> so packet traces will probably like this subnetting scheme better. Because you're not wasting as many IP addresses on each uh, subnet. <laughs> you have to do more than just this chart. You you have to do you might want to do the chart to see what your what your ranges are what your network addresses your host ranges your broadcast addresses but then you still have to configure those devices such as what we've been doing in, on the previous uh, WebEx session. Okay, let's let's look at uh, page three. It says assign the first valid host and the second subnet. The first valid host and the second subnet. Let's look at the, here's the second subnet. What's the first valid host? 33. That's the first valid host. Right? 
home. See if we can manage this a little better. Okay. It says assign the last valid host address in the second subnet to PC1. So what would that be? The last valid host dot 62. Okay. Okay, let's go to step six. Assign the last valid host address in the fourth subnet. One, two, three, four. The, the last valid host address in the fourth subnet. 126. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, as you configure your devices, make sure you use the appropriate subnet mask. The appropriate subnet mask. Okay. On uh, page four, we see that you have to deal with the DCE. Okay. That's where you um, okay. How do you know the DCE? Because it's going to be the side that has the clock and also the label DCE. So this is the side that will get the clock rate. This is S zero zero zero. So you would go into S zero 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 and turn on the interface and set the clock rate. 6400 and then put in the appropriate IP address at some point. Okay, subnet mask. I'm sorry, 64,000. It, it, it may not always be 64,000. Okay, but you know, in the lab, we mostly use 64,000. Sometimes you may see uh, 125,000. Okay. All right. And get to page five. Note that you're required to go to ping from the host to the default gateway. Again, host to default gateway. Then ping from serial interface to serial interface. You will not be required to ping from end to end, from PC to PC. The reason being is probably because if we were to look into the router at the routing table, we wouldn't see the appropriate um, remote networks there. Basically, we wouldn't have static routes or dynamic routing protocol enabled. And Cisco is aware of, of um, the fact that we have not discussed those activities in detail at this point. So you're not expected to know those uh, procedures. We'll get into static routes and dynamic routing in Net 120.